It's the Notch 6 Podcast Special Edition number 6 from the 43rd Annual Lionel Collectors Club of America National Convention. It's a very special evening on Notch 6. We're privileged to have Senior Vice President and General Manager of Lionel LLC, Howard Hitchcock, on the show this evening. We have a great chat with Howard about Lionel as an organization moving forward in the coming years, some of the changes at Lionel. This is a wonderful interview with so much great information. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this one. So sit back, relax, and put it in notch six. We've got a good one for you. This is the Notch Six Online Podcast. Notch Six is the podcast dedicated to O gauge trains. Whether you're collecting, operating, or just getting started, Notch Six is your home for O gauge news, events, and interviews. Now, here is your host, Derek Thomas. Welcome back to the Notch 6 podcast for Friday evening. It is my honor and my privilege to welcome to the show this evening Howard Hitchcock, the Senior Vice President and GM of Lionel LLC. Howard, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. We're so glad to have you along with us this evening. Oh, Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here and uh, having a great time here at the LCCA convention in Chattanooga. And uh, just got done with a great onstage presentation, so uh, happy to be on the call. Wonderful. Uh, we've had a great time talking with your team this week, and, and kind of just to, to lay out where we want to go with this this evening, uh, your team has done a great job kind of giving us the 50-foot view of individual departments at Lionel. We want to take a look at the 1,000-foot view tonight, what Lionel looks like as, as a whole. Uh, I want to start out asking you, you've spent six years previous to your new position at Lionel working in the die-cast collectibles business. Now that you've had a few months to settle into the train business, can you tell me some of the similarities you've encountered between the two brands and, and what makes the train business different as well? Sure. Um, you know, it's uh, my whole career has been really product-based and largely collectibles-based. And in that time, not only in the six years previous, but in the time prior to that, I've always had the privilege of working on world-class brands, leaders in their in their industry and trade. And uh, with specifically with the diecast business um, in in the NASCAR world, the, the brand that I managed and oversaw and and guided uh, was the preeminent brand. It was the Lionel of NASCAR diecast, um, and and still is, quite honestly. Um, so this, from a similarity perspective, um, you know, class of uh, the way the way this product is distributed, the the type of customer, the mom and pop uh, hobby shops, the wholesalers. Um, the emerging distribution channels uh, with using the internet is uh, is largely similar. Um, a lot of the same passions and triggers that you know the limitedness of an item, uh, how special it is. Um, in the NASCAR diecast, we used a lot of numbering and sometimes special finishes. Uh, some of that is employed uh, on the line outside of the business. Some of it probably could be employed a little bit more on the on the line outside of the business, but. Um, People's passion for the product, people's passion for the interest uh, is similar. I think actually on the train side, it's probably even a little more so passionate. Um, these are, you know, the, the people on the NASCAR side of the business sort of connect with uh, a, a person, a driver, and there's driver loyalty. So they, you know, as the driver may move around uh, in today's day and age, they they sort of follow that driver. So they may, you know, they, if it was Tony Stewart, they used to collect the 20 and now they collect the 14 because that's where he's at. Well, on the train side, um, you know, the passion is for sort of an inanimate object, but a more romantic uh, notion, a, a romantic time, a history of, of you know, American power and, and this sort of romantic era of, of trains. So, um, you know, I think actually because it's sort of this inanimate notion that's in your head, um, and then, you know, in, in time, some of our customers, um, even remembering some of this from their childhood, uh, you know, this is a this is a very emotional connection, a very powerful connection. So I think um, you know a lot of those triggers are the same. They may be slightly stronger in one business versus the other. Um, as far as differences, um, you know, the things I used to make before didn't have motors and didn't move around and and uh, didn't employ a lot of the technical, the real super technical stuff on the control systems and and you know some of that is scary to some of the customers on the train side and some of it is is second nature. Um, I think what we're trying to do is um, is bridge a lot of some of these connections, make it a little bit easier for use, um, and and really sort of uh, bring modern sort of performance and expectations of, of products and, and tie them back to sort of this history and nostalgia that exists in the train side. So, 
that part of the business is, is quite new to me. It was not something that I sort of found on the podcast side. There's a sense of a leaner, meaner, more focused Lionel that is starting to emerge. There's some great stories of you and your team all working together at the North Carolina location to, to get out on the floor, unload pallets as a team, work in the shipping department, and just generally work together as a team. What binds this team together and what's driving them forward as a group? Um, you know, the the the, the undying um sort of passion to be successful is really I think what it what is the motivation behind that. Um we we employ a very um hands on approach to management. Uh, I've got a great team of people. Um you know I spend a lot of time uh with talking with people of, of all different areas, um different uh skill sets, um spending time with those folks, uh integrating and, and getting input. Um I believe that you know, I believe that everybody in every position adds value to the organization. Um, you have to have a team of committed people to get the job done. I don't view myself or any of my direct managers um, as as above uh, any sort of role or responsibility. If it's about getting something done, then we roll up our sleeves and we do it. Um, so for us, it's it's very much um, you know success. We're driven by success and. Yeah, the, the organization is leaner um, with the combination. The, the the advantage of having sort of two businesses is that you can leverage strengths of one and the other together. Um, shared resources, so you've got a shared distribution facility that sort of um, the two businesses are complementary. The, the peak time on the NASCAR side is not the peak time on the train side. So you're able to sort of employ resources and keep them busy, cross-train a bunch of people on different things. So... You've got shared IT, you've got shared accounting and finance, and warehousing operations, logistics. Um, you know, you've got separate sort of expertises in marketing, but those those people um, work together. They they sit side by side and they share ideas and notions. Um, we have management teams every Tuesday morning where we go in a round robin and everybody informs everybody else of what's going on. So, I firmly believe in um, in, in involvement in uh, all levels of the organization and um, and really sort of uh, making a commitment. You you have to want to be part of the team and be successful. And you know, with that strategy, we've uh, we've created an environment in, in North Carolina where it's very very stable. Um, since we've started uh, Lino Racing, um, we've only had two people leave of their own volition. Um, and you know, people have wanted to come and join. And and you know, we have people from inside the industry, outside the industry, that are hearing about us. Have worked with Lionel, our Lionel fans. Uh, that, that want to be part of the team. So it's exciting to lead that that uh, that culture and, and that organization. And it's great to hear you explain it that way, especially uh, the the remark about the NASCAR and the diecast racing having a different peak season than train season. And I think uh, one of the, the concerns that, that has been shared within the hobby, and I think this does a great job of explaining it, is the fact that you know, you really do get to leverage the strength of two different businesses that have two different peak times to create, you know, a, a company that it's not just based around one season, you know, and as train guys, we clearly only think, well, you know, basically September to February is the only thing that matters, but it's neat to hear that for Lionel now, it's not just about September to February. It's about getting prepared for race season. It's about, you know, looking ahead at, at the race schedules and also still having time to focus on the train things. Uh, it's been the fear within the hobby for a number of years that Lionel is being managed by people that don't understand toy trains. And it's true that there are many fresh faces in the company with diverse backgrounds that are outside of, you know, the normal realm of this hobby. How is your team working to learn to understand the toy train world? Well, I, you know, I, I, I've heard that before, and it's interesting because some of the folks that we've brought in, um, you know, actually do have some train train history, and it may not be from a professional manner, but but on a personal level, um, I think, you know, I think that's a fair criticism um, because this is such a unique and strong passion base. People really want to feel comfortable that Lionel understands their passion, understands what they want out of a product form. Um, at, the, at, at the beginning of this, Lionel is a business, and it needs to be operated as a business. And there's a lot of um, expertise in management of categories and products and brands. I mean, that really is my passion. That is that is my background from, um, 
internships in college. Um, so, so one of the things that's important to understand is you have to manage these things and develop strategies that are specific to the types of products. We have a very wide range of, of products that, that hit everyone from, you know, three-year-olds with little lines all the way up to these grand vision engines at, you know, $2,500 or whatever, whatever the price point is and, and has all of the special features. Um, I think what we're doing to make sure that we, um, continue to keep true to the heritage is, A, we're listening very closely to the people in the organization who have the training experience and the history. I mean, we have John Zahornicki who has developed the legacy control system and has implemented the electronics and really, um, you know, is a trained guy and operator and understands that. We're, you know, Mike Reagan, who, you know, had his own private business in the train industry and, and has run service and turned service into a world-class organization. Um, we have expertise in Michigan that still is employed and exists. Um, we've relocated people who may or may not have even been sitting in an office. Well, I know had employees, uh, a recent addition is Ryan Kunkel, who was a sort of social media coordinator, uh, who was sitting out of his home in Pennsylvania, and we've brought him in, and he's getting involved in the product development. So I think we've done a very nice job balancing um, people who have sort of the core hobby experience with people who have sort of the business experience. And, uh, and leveraging what, you know, like I said earlier, the resources between the two organizations. By having these two organizations work together, we're actually stronger. We're able to employ people in positions that may not be full-time roles with one side or the other, but when you add the two together, we actually have resources that we wouldn't have if we didn't have the second business. You know, Mike Phillips, who I think you talked to yesterday, um, you know, joined us in January and, and he was one of the guys I'm referring to. His dad, um, is a is a is a club member and has has been a passion and he remembers building these these layouts as a child and the fun of laying things out and doing the wiring and operating the trains and you know he went on to develop a to develop a, his college career and his professional career and it was in product and he's he's very passionate and speaks uh, a very similar language and shares a lot of the same ideals that I do with how you market how you bring things to how you bring products to market and. And, um, I, you know, together we, we, uh, are very, very strong. We, we share a lot of the same ideas and, you know, so he, uh, you know, <laughs> it was funny. There's a story, uh, about him driving down the road. He had a meeting with the Boy Scouts of America who happens to be based in Charlotte and he's driving down the road and he sees a locomotive and he starts pointing out the, the make and the model and how, why it could be this model and that model if this was changed and that was changed. So, um, you know, I, I have always, told people product is product and you can get passionate about everything that you make and I've made anything from dishes to glassware to resin collectibles and die cast you know we get passionate about what we do because we want to succeed and that's that's really the key building off of that idea of passion has the reality set in for you yet that you're responsible for the legacy of a company that was founded 113 years ago by an immigrant who basically ended up creating the largest toy company in the United States at one time has that set in for you yet I have um, I have definitely experienced uh, what it is that you're saying, where you where I am responsible for leading a 113 year old organization, um, and and uh, just just the sort of awareness that the position holds, and I I hold that with very deep respect. Um, it's a position that hasn't really been held by a whole lot of different people, and um, it's it's a true privilege to manage anything that's 113 years old and is still around. Um, honestly, you know, I try to keep my head down and keep busy um, doing what it is to do. And we've been working on the mechanics of the business uh, as of late and uh, have been very busy doing that. And when I say the mechanics, you know, this goes back to how you sell, when you sell, what you sell, strategies, pricing, um, distribution. And I like to be involved in all of that. And I like to understand, you know, who's sitting where in the office and why and who, you know, how are we making that product? And then on to, you know, the, the manufacturing and going overseas as I'm leaving there tomorrow. So, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I view it with, with great honor and, um, I do experience it when I get to go places and people want, you know, to, to just talk to me or shake my hand or, um, you know, sign something or just thank me for being who I am. And, you know, it's, it's, it is an honor. And, um, you know, I, I, I uh, I guess I try to not let it you know affect me in any way. I I just want to do my job and do it the uh, the best way I can. So um, for me, it's really about uh, leading the team and not uh, and uh, making the business successful. And that's if I do that, then I consider myself successful, and um, you know things are good. 
Lionel is a company that at one time really thrived on nostalgia and the dreams of the American child in a society that seems to have had imagination replaced with, you know, a computer generated virtual reality. Does Lionel intend to try and bring trains into that virtual reality or is it the intention to try and kind of fight the tide and encourage kids to use their imagination again? Um, well, it's actually both. Um, you know, I have I have a, actually a great test case at home. I have a nine-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter, and um, I've I've given them some train sets, and I've sort of observed what they do with them. And um, kids, by their very nature, want to create a play. They they have toys. They they have, they want to create things and build things. And you know, when we look to other very successful toy companies that that have gone through peaks and valleys, you, you take a look at something like a Legos, who you know, is thriving, and they've come up with a perfect strategy of integrating things that make them successful. So, in in our minds, and some of the some of the work that I've sort of commissioned and asked for within the organization, I don't believe it's we. I don't believe we can survive by fighting the tide. Um, you know, but I I do believe in creative play, and I think that's a big part of what we do, and we have to incorporate that. But what I would like to do is try to blend things together. Technology isn't going away. If anything, it's only going to continue to advance. So my question to some of my people and some of the ideas I've proposed is, how do we integrate these things and how do we actually, if people are going to have or kids are going to have iPads and iPods and iPhones and all these other things in their hands, okay, how do we, you know, there, there's creative, you know, there's creative online building things that they're already playing with, things like Mindscape and, and different stuff like that where you create but you create digitally. Well, okay, I have a physical product. How do I get the physical product to integrate with the virtual world so that we can create? And, you know, there's some virtual reality type stuff. I mean, there's some, there's some control operations. You know, that's largely why Lion Chief is a, is a big thing. We've, we've taken it from a transformer block to something that's held in our hand and given it enhanced sounds and enhanced functions. And we will continue to expand that because we think that by mimicking what is going on in the market with technology, we will um, be more successful integrating and and capturing the imagination of the young child. I think at the end of the day, our, our product is still um, a very unique product in that all phases of life, someone can interface with this product. You first experience it as a child, whether you get that as a gift, um, you learn your dad said or your grandfather said, or um, as a, now as a little girl, I mean, being involved in that, and we often think of it as a little boy's toy, but, but, you know, I think that's the wrong thing to do. We should think about it as a, as a child's toy. And, um, you know, you, you, you build fond memories of it, and maybe it's running around a Christmas tree, or uh, maybe you got it at Christmas. And I think that as people um, move on later in life, it's, of course, the train set will go away for a little while as, as other things become important, you know, school and sports and um, you know, dating and cars and, but, you know, eventually those same people are going to go off and have their own families and try to create their own memories. And, and, you know, they're going to continue to celebrate holiday traditions and family and, and reintegrate with that product. And, you know, um, having the young kids again, as, as I do, you know, there's, there's things that I'm drawn to as a parent because I like them as a, as a child that I like my children to share. And, some of them have been updated, and some of them are still classic. Um, but those those are the experiences that I connect with and I remember, and I try to build for my children. And I think the same thing applies for training. So I think it's heavily based in nostalgia, um, but yet I think integrating with modern-day technology is only going to help the business and, and drive it forward. I don't think it's going to hurt it. What a great answer. I think uh, I think you're right in that it's not such a black and white answer to the question. And obviously, you know, finding a compromise and a middle ground between those two worlds seems to be very important to Lionel. Uh, clearly, Lionel has a very strong relationship with the LCCA. It's not many companies that, that take such an active role in getting out there and supporting, you know, the clubs that are that are basically fan clubs for the industry. Why is that partnership with the LCCA so valuable to Lionel as a company? Well, I mean, our partnership with LCCA, you know, uh, is sort of symbiotic. We, we, I think we take, we work together very well and we both derive advantages from each other. Um, these are the, the most passionate advocates of our brand. It would be foolish for us not to, uh, from Lionel's perspective, not to be integrated with those folks who are the most passionate, most loyal customers. I mean, these, these customers are the folks that if, if they got cut, they bleed blue and orange. They, you know, they don't bleed red. And, um, you know, so 
So to be able to listen to them, to be able to use them as a, as a guide for uh, your business and your development works going forward and, and the past um, is certainly something that uh, is, is part of that. And, and the LCCA has, has initiatives that are very much in tune with where we're going. Um, the LCCA, I talked about this on stage today at the, at the LCCA convention, um, the LCCA has got a, a big child initiative. They have their own separate um, portion of the club. They've got a child membership level. They've just announced um, that they've reduced the cost of being a child member, which we think is fantastic. Um, they have helped endorse and support us at uh, World's Greatest Hobby and, and all of the different shows that uh, that expose train sets to families who, who may not have had trains as a, you know, the parents may not have had trains as a child. So, um, so many of the initiatives that LCCA does um, is obviously to the benefit of the, the LCCA membership, but also to the benefit of, of Lionel. The, the press that LCCA has garnered here um, during the uh, Chattanooga event is incredible. They've been on every major news network uh, locally. They have been for weeks now in local press, um, front page of the paper on Wednesday, the day before I arrived here at the event. Um, so, you know, to, to be able to integrate that much uh, into into a place where they hold a convention, to be able to hold a, an event of this size, of this magnitude, and, and pull it off as well, um, you know, we're really honored to be partnered with them. And we we uh, we think that uh, you know it's a benefit uh, to uh, to Lionel to to be partnered with them because they share so many of the same same philosophies. So it's it's a great relationship. We'll close on this question in broad terms uh, for Lionel. What are some of your goals for the next twelve months? Where do you see the company in a year? Um, I you know so much of the work that we've done recently has been very very tactical. It's uh, it's been I say the mechanics of the business. How do we do things and and um, you know how do we integrate processes and procedures and you know we've gone through system conversions and all that type of stuff and that and that honestly is going to continue um, probably through the next year. Um, I want to emerge on the on the next side or this the, after the next twelve months. Um, Really being clean in process, sort of going through the conversion at this point, um, you know, sort of letting the dust settle, uh, the, the staff being where the staff is. We've, we've moved a lot of people around and we continue to change roles and responsibilities. I see, um, those becoming clearer for the, for the folks internally and, and, uh, people working together, um, even better over the next 12 months. Um, I, I, can see us having a refined uh, new product introduction process that is quite frankly different than what it is today. Um, I see us changing the way we buy products, better inventory control. I see us marketing um, new initiatives. I hope to expand our licenses. Um, I hope to bring about uh, product innovation, uh, place that in the marketplace. I would like to expand youth interaction uh, in the product. Um, I would like to, you know, um, I would like to have our inventory be the right inventory, the things that we should always have in stock, in stock, the things that uh, we want to sell through, not in stock. Um, you know, it really uh, sort of sort of moving through all of that and, and beginning to think about the larger, bigger initiative expanding on things uh, that we've started to touch on already, um, the electronic space, uh, you know, social media. What, what, ex what is that? How does that evolve? We have uh, Battle Trains, the uh, the application which should go live nationally here at the beginning of August. You know, is that a space where we can play? Um, that we've launched a line of Christmas items. Um, Lionel believes we own Christmas, so how do we take that and expand that and and go into different product forms that might make sense? And then you know, we've commissioned some studies uh, uh, at a couple of different. Uh, uh, suppliers and locations that, that talk about opportunities and where we can go as a, as a company and as a business. Where can we take Lionel as a brand um, to to expand that distribution and range? It's uh, every day I wear a Lionel shirt in an elevator or somebody wants to talk to me about, you know, I remember when I had my set or, you know, the, they, they talk about the nostalgic times. And so we have so much brand power to really play off of um, we're we're going to look for the next big opportunities and how we go beyond what we are today, not not to you know walk away from what we are today, but only to further enhance what we are today um, as we move forward. So there's a lot of big uh, big ambitious goals. Um, 
a lot to do, and it, it certainly keeps uh, a lot of people busy. But um, I think it's all accomplishable uh, as long as we you know stick together as a team. And and so far we've been uh, we've been pretty good at that. It sounds like there are some great things on the horizon for Lionel. You've been listening to Howard Hitchcock, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Lionel LLC. Howard, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it, and hopefully we'll get a chance to catch up with you here again in the future and find out what's going on at Lionel. Hey, no problem. I really enjoyed it. Have a, uh, have a great weekend. This is the Notch 6 Online Podcast, your home for O-Gage news, events, and interviews. Here again is Derek Thomas. Something I wanted to share with everybody tonight is I got a listener email to the show on Wednesday afternoon, and this listener has been listening to our podcast the entire way up to the convention from Memphis, Tennessee. And so we thought it would be neat to have this listener check in. Now, what makes this even more special is she, and yes, I said she, is a brand new LCCA member. This is her first LCCA convention. Her name is Karen, and so I caught up with Karen yesterday a little bit right as they had arrived at the convention and wanted to see kind of what it's like being a woman in model railroading and also what she was looking forward to with her first LCCA convention. Here's what she had to say. I grew up having a model train. I had an HO growing up, and then I had an inn in college just because it was the only thing that fit in the dorm. Kind of got put away until we had room in the house again, and then I put my inn back up. And then about two years ago, uh, I took over the what's supposed to be a you know formal dining room and wanted O. So I uh, talked my husband into going for O. We are in the minority here at the convention as well because I have the member badge and he has the family badge. <laughs> oh, how funny. How funny. <laughs> so what brought you up to the convention? Well, I really didn't know too much about the club, really. And, and um, oh, six months ago, I guess, we were watching that show called I Love Toy Trains. And I saw an ad that the convention was in Chattanooga. Well, we're in Memphis. That's just right down the road. I said, well, we could do that. We could drive to that. So we joined it and we signed up and apparently we're early enough to get the early registration gift because I got the, the engine that's the early registration gift when we, when we got here. So I was really excited about that. Bought the convention car as well. We're all set. So it was about a five hour drive from Memphis. Not bad. What are you looking forward to seeing while you're at the convention? Well, unfortunately, we couldn't come for the whole week. I really wish we could have because some of the earlier tours were what I really wanted to do. So tomorrow we're going to go do the Incline Railroad and um, hopefully get to ride on the, the Tennessee Valley one. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the trade show tomorrow night, too. Um, the last two years we've gone to the trade show in Nashville at, right, right before Christmas and had a good time and picked up some nice treasures at it. So I'm kind of looking forward to that Friday night. And then I think the banquet's going to be pretty neat to go to, too. But everything's new to me since we've not been to a convention before. It's my first one. So it's, it's exciting. Very cool. As a as a woman that's into model railroading, uh, what do you think makes you different, or or do you see yourself as one of the guys, and you're just as capable as everybody else is? <laughs> well, I think I grew up with a dad who would have liked to have had a son because while I was a little league cheerleader, he was the one holding the sticks at the football games since he didn't have a son playing and that kind of thing, and I was the one that went to football games with him. I'm very much into football as well, so I guess that makes me a little different, too. But when it comes to the trains, which my dad had had trains, too, so he liked it, but I was into it. I like the scenery. I like to get the really cool cars, but when it comes to some of the wiring and stuff, I do not understand all that. That's when I yell for help. So <laughs> that, that's where I guess we, we do well. My husband doesn't really like to do the scenery, and I like to do all the scenery, and so we kind of can work together in that aspect of it. So that, that that's works out nice. Yeah, that's really cool that it is a a family hobby for you guys, yeah. and that's that's what we would love to see more of in this hobby. And and yeah. like I said, thank thank you again for dropping the email to me, and I hope you have a wonderful time at the convention. Well, thanks for asking me to do this. It's kind of cool. And my thanks to you, Karen, for the kind words in your email, and for taking the time out to talk with us on the Notch Six podcast. I do hope you guys have a spectacular time at the convention, and we're so excited to have you as a part of the LCCA, and hopefully you'll be around for many, many years to come. All right, with me for the Friday edition of the Notch 6 podcast, my cohort, my partner in crime, the man himself, Al Cole, a special events manager for the LCCA. Happy Friday, Al. Welcome back. Well, happy Friday to you, Derek. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been a great night here so far. Uh, just 
so thrilled with with having Howard Hitchcock on the show, and I hope our listeners enjoyed it. Um, you know, let's something you and I have talked on and off of the air about for for a while now is how special the relationship is between Lionel and the LCCA. Can you elaborate on that for a minute? Sure, Derek. Um, well, it was another great day in the LCCA. Uh, we had numerous activities. We had a Lionel seminar, and that's where the whole team from Lionel, Mike Reagan, Matt Ashba, uh, J. Don Reese, uh, Howard Hitchcock, Kimmy Condolese, um, all spent two hours um, presenting information about their product, uh, their future plans, uh, marketing plans, uh, the new Lion Chief, dem- they did a demonstration on that. They introduced the uh, Texas Tommy uh, prototype sample to our members. And one of the benefits of being a member of the LCCA is our close working relationship with Lionel. Um, we were founded back in 1970 by a gentleman named Jim, named Jim, Jim Gates and 83 other charter members back in 1970. And you have to think back then, there were no magazines dedicated to O-Gage. OGR didn't exist. Um, the classic toy trains didn't exist. There were model railroading magazines, but they were primarily HO. So our founders had a passion and a love for Lionel trains. And so they wanted to develop a club with publications that were dedicated to promote and foster an interest in Lionel trains. That's in our constitution. That's our purpose. Um, we, we like other trains, we promote the hobby in general, but our passion is, is with Lionel. And uh, we have a great working relationship with them. Some of the benefits that we have with them is that we develop limited edition products that's unique designs that's limited to our members only. So it's a smaller run, something unique, something creative, such as the Texas Tommy uh, uh, switcher and cap unit. And our members love that. That's usually desirable among the collectors. Uh, we've been doing a lot of special events with them. Uh, we've worked to work on the world's greatest hobby and tour show, uh, shows. If you notice, if Lionel's in one booth, we're in the adjacent booth. So we like to say that Lionel makes the trains. We in the Lionel Collectors Club of America, we play with the trains. So that's how it works. It's a great working relationship. I think uh, even... Um, uh, Jerry Calabrese indicated in our video interviews with him that he uses the, the seminar that we have, happened today as a sounding board, and he takes that feedback very seriously. The, the, our member feedback and input gets into the, the, the um, line out system, and they, if there's some things that they can do and some improvements that they can make, they'll listen to our, our true blue loyal, loyal customers. Uh, we, we have a lot of projects together. Uh, we've worked out with Lionel to develop the National Modular Railroad Standard. What's unique about this LCCA Lionel Fast Track Modular System is that Lionel is on board. It's a cataloged item that we have their support. This is something that separates us. Um, Lionel at one point in time you know, said that they wanted to develop the, the world's largest layout. So we look at this as an opportunity, uh, as a tool, in the toolbox to help develop the hobby. How do you take um, a, a family that has a, a starter set to an oval, and how do you how do you get them to develop into a hobby where they have a layout, where they where they build things, where they you know maybe use a cardboard box to make a tunnel? How do you you know take them to to use Jerry Calabrese's uh, funnel model? How do you get them from the the top of the funnel down to the bottom of the funnel, which is where the LCCA members are? The LCCA members are their, um, you know, legacy con- uh, consumers. They're, they they buy in anything and everything that Lionel produces. So, you know, how do you how do you develop that? How do you how do you make that sustainable? And we think that the modular layout system is one aspect or one way to achieve that. A, it introduces people to to the hobby. It's a group activity. Um, if people live in an apartment that can't have a layout, they can build a modular section. And this gives you an opportunity to even, with large radius curves, utilize the legacy system. So, you know, it's a stepping stone to, to help develop the, the, the hobby. Uh, so we're really excited about it. Uh, we have a couple events coming up that we're working with, um, with Lionel. We have, um, we'll be in August 17th. We'll be in Canfield, Ohio at the Customer Service Center. And LCCA and Lionel are going to be there together. 
We have another event, event on September 28th where we'll be at Chicagoland. And we're going to be alongside Lionel there and uh, promoting the hobby, you know, getting, getting families involved, getting kids involved. And, and that's something that's very important to the LCCA. I think we, we think the same, same philosophy. I often say that we have the same, the same issues. Theirs is just on a larger scale. You know, again, trying to sustain, sustain this, trying to, to develop a, a younger, younger um, audience. It's, it's an issue facing the hobby in general, and I think we're aligned to, to offer potential solutions to those, those issues. So um, it's been a great relationship. Uh, Lenny Dean, who used to work for Lionel for over 60, 60 years, he was an LCCA member. He had come to the LCCA conventions all the time. Uh, Marie Dean, um, his widow, who's a great lady, she couldn't be here this week, but uh, she's typically here with us. And uh, she comes to all our special events that, like, that are in her area. And, um, you know, we, we just are part of the Lionel family. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's all about family. All right, Al. You know, it's, it's, like I said, it's another great day in the LCCA. It's winding down. Tomorrow is the last big hurrah. What's going on tomorrow that we have to look forward to? Well, tomorrow is the pinnacle of, of the, uh, the, the convention. We have a train show that's open to the public. Uh, we've been very successful this week in getting um, media attention. We've been on the ABC, NBC, and CBS affiliate uh, TV stations. We were on the front page of the Chattanooga Times. So we're getting a lot of publicity. There's been a steady flow of public traffic coming in and seeing the Lionel layout and the LCCA modular layout and coming in. Well, tomorrow we have over um, 110 uh, vendors, uh, members from all over the country, that are bringing in their, their trains to buy, sell, and trade. So um, we have a, a train show from 9 to 3 that's open to the public. It's free. Uh, we're accepting uh, donations to go to the benefit of the Erlinger Local Hospital here. So um, we got Lenny the Lion that's going to be on display. We have free free trolley rides on the Chattanooga Choo Choo um, Hotel's uh, trolley. And uh, it's just going to be a fantastic day. It's, it's, I encourage people to bring the family. It's going to be an all day family event. And then after that, we are going to wrap it up with the, with the highlight of the week, which is our, our, our Saturday evening banquet. And that's more of a formal affair. It's where, you know, we, we have a tendency to get dressed up a little bit and have a nice evening out on the time, out on the time, so to speak. And again, we recognize that this convention is family oriented. And our, our, if our wives aren't happy, we're not happy. So um, it's, a, it's a night out. Uh, we have uh, a light entertainment, a nice dinner. Everybody walks away with a, a table prize. And there's usually, uh, you know, some Lionel product there. So uh, people really, really get a special, uh, special kick out of that. Every table has a unique product. There's only 80 of them made. So everybody... <laughs> kind of uh, clamors over that, that one table prize. There's some people that collect those and have every one since, since we started doing that. So it's, it's very desirable among uh, the collectors. But it, it's a fun evening. It's, uh, we're going to be giving um, uh, a presentation to President De De Dennis DeVito. Uh, I'm going to be giving him as the outgoing president. We also had another, uh, another special event today. Uh, today is Bob. Choo Choo Carter's birthday. He uh, he is the convention co-manager, so he and a group of volunteers have been working their butts off for weeks and months. And actually, you know, Bob and his team have been working all year round for this event. I I, I view these conventions as a analogous to a seven year seven day wedding. You know, when uh, you you're married, right, Derek? And you planned your wedding. I am. You plan your plan. You plan. Yep. You plan your wife plans, and something always yep. goes wrong. You know, it's just inevitable. And no matter what, I've never been to a bad wedding, though. You know, yeah. some things may not go as planned, and that's analogous to a convention. It's, it's quite an undertaking by an awful lot of volunteers that, that are committed and they have a passion for this. I think that's what really separates our club is that the people here are so warm and so family-oriented. It's more than just collecting and consuming and and, and selfish behavior. It's, it's about giving things back to the community. 
and that's why I'm so proud to be part of this organization. I'm, um, that's why I, I uh, agreed to uh, run again. So I'll, uh, you're stuck with me for another six years, Woo-hoo. and uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm excited about it, and I'm and I'm grateful for all the the LCCA members for coming here. Uh, they've uh, you know they spend a lot of money to be here, but they they truly walk away and have a great experience. They come up to you and they say thank you and they appreciate it, and that makes you feel good inside. One of the things, Derek, that too for me personally was when my kids were younger, my son was three years old, I took him to the first convention in in Des Moines, Iowa. And I was apprehensive about bringing a child in uh, to a convention, you know, kid being in the fishbowl. And, you know, I've been in places where, A, they don't allow strollers, things like that. So, you know, it was it was not really, I just found the LCCA to be the most family kid-friendly organization out there. And that's what really, really sold me on getting involved with the, with the hobby, or with the club here. And I'm forever grateful. To be honest with you, I've received more than I've given. Um, my, my children have had an opportunity to see the different parts of the country. We retire family vacations into these great conventions. And, uh, you know, they've seen the Grand Canyon. They've seen the Pacific Ocean, uh, the uh, Liberty Bell in Philadelphia all because of us going to these conventions. Typically, when you go to a uh, destination type vacation, you miss everything in between point A and B. And we have such a beautiful country that uh, you would miss. And I think the uh, LCCA conventions have helped me see that and share that with my children. So for that, I'm forever grateful. Al, it's true that the LCCA really does offer its members a great deal. It's one more reason I'm proud to be an LCCA member. Looking ahead for us for the Notch 6 podcast tomorrow, we've got a great way to finish up the week. We'll have you and Dennis DeVito on the show tomorrow, basically giving what I'm lovingly referring to as the LCCA State of the Union address. We're going to look at you know the year so far. We're going to look at the year ahead, and we'll find out the state of the LCCA tomorrow. So we have that to look forward to. We'll let you go for tonight, but hey, thank you so much, and we're looking forward to talking with you and Dennis tomorrow. All right, that'll do it for the Notch 6 podcast this evening. We really hope you've enjoyed the show. It was an excellent show in my opinion, but I always think that it's an excellent show. Thank you to everybody who's following us on iTunes and Stitcher. Know that you can always check us out at facebook.com slash notch6. Or if you'd like to email us, which I always love emails from our listeners, feel free to drop me a line at notch6, that's N-O-T-C-H, 6 is spelled out, S-I-X, at gmail.com. And as always, feel free to keep up on the show on the website Notch6, Notch and the number 6.com. We'll be back one more time tomorrow for this week to wrap up our time at the LCCA annual convention. We'll see you tomorrow on Notch 6. Thanks for listening to Notch 6. You can find us on Facebook for all the latest news and previews of our next show. Be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes so you'll receive the show as soon as it's posted. If you have any questions or comments, email notch6 at gmail.com. That's N-O-T-C-H-S-I-X at gmail.com. We'll see you again soon. Until then, be sure to keep it in Notch 6.